Hi, I'm the Casual Spaceman and welcome to my channel once again and to episode 3 of Mission Control News. I've had a request from a subscriber, unfortunately I wasn't smart enough to make a note as to who that was and they wanted an update on James Webb. So what is James Webb? Well, it's a telescope named after a bloke from NASA called James Webb, apparently. So anyway, what about James Webb? Cue me music and let's find out. Press play. Press the play button. No, the play button. Oh, f As I said, it was one of my lovely subscribers that suggested an update to the James Webb Space Telescope. But because I was, wasn't stupid enough to make a note of it and I can't find out who it was, then please comment below, make yourself known, and I promise you I'll give you a shout out in the next video, if you, if you like. So, but first of all, for those of you that are not in the know, let's find out what exactly is James Webb Space Telescope. Well, James Webb is the long-awaited and many times delayed successor to the Hubble Space Telescope, yet 100 times more powerful and with many more capabilities and some great advantages over Hubble. So if you think of Hubble, but overdosing on steroids, in a good way, of course. After a very shaky start when Hubble was put into orbit with a defectively made mirror, it was fixed with the aid of the Space Shuttle but since then has been a fantastic tool that has been used to answer many of the questions we've had about our universe and its birth. And as you've seen, it has produced some truly stunning images of deep space that traditional telescopes on Earth have never been able to see or produce. But as with most things, all good things must come to an end. One of the main issues with Hubble is that it orbits the Earth at a low Earth orbit, currently at an altitude of around 340 miles. There is little to no atmosphere at that altitude, however there is some, and enough to cause a tiny amount of drag and therefore enough to gradually slow it down over many years. And when you slow something down in orbit, it eventually deorbits and burns up in the Earth's atmosphere. The space shuttle was used to service Hubble while in orbit and put it into a higher orbit each time. But as you know, NASA ended Shuttle's career in 2011 and there is currently no other spacecraft with the capability to service Hubble and cancel its gradual decaying orbit. Where Hubble leaves off, James Webb takes over. As James Webb won't be orbiting the Earth, it will be orbiting the Sun at a point called the Second Lagrange Point, or L2. A point between the Earth's orbit and that of Mars, where the gravitational pull of the Earth and the Sun cancel each other out and creates a point where the James Webb can stay at the same orbital speed as the Earth, so keeping a constant distance from the Earth. This has great advantages, one being the images it produces are not going to be affected at all by the Sun's infrared light and the Earth's atmosphere. But the big disadvantage is that James Webb would be that it will be some 1.5 million kilometers away, so maintenance while in this orbit will be at best incredibly difficult, but most likely impossible because no manned spacecraft has ever reached even close to that distance from the Earth, and neither do we have the capability, yet. Which leads us on to why James Webb has been taking so long to develop, build and test. Without that maintenance, NASA has to make sure it would work 100% at all times during its relatively short expected lifespan of between 5 and 10 years, and of course survive the vast varying temperatures in space. So test after test after test has to be performed as well as testing the tests. Not only that, the technology required for James Webb 
has had to be invented and developed, which in turn has created a massive over budget and a 14 year delay. The manufacturers of James Webb, Northrop Grumman, will be acutely aware of the problems Hubble had with the defective mirror at the start of its life. So James Webb will only have one shot to work. If it fails, that is most likely the end of James Webb before that has even begun. However, after many delays and almost being scrapped due to budget issues, there has been some progress, as James Webb recently completed its final test in a vacuum, as well as temperature tests, and the telescope appears to perform normally. However, the data of those tests will have to be scrutinised in fine detail. Not only that, there will still need to be many other tests, and I suspect those tests will include vibration tests to see what happens to this delicate telescope under launch conditions from the launch pad and the staging of the launch rocket. So although James Webb has passed an important milestone, there is still much to be done. The planned launch date is currently set for the end of March 2021 on board the European Space Agency Ariane 5 rocket. But I personally won't hold your breath until James Webb is switched on and we see the first images of outer space. There are a million things that could go wrong between then and now, the rest of the testing, the launch into orbit and the deployment of its antennas and its complex dish structure. The journey from launch to its orbital point and by the time it is fully functional is said will take in the region of six months. So the chances are we won't be seeing any results until the end of 2021, providing everything goes to plan. But as with most space programs, they often don't. Well, I hope you can forgive me for being pessimistic about this project, but when you consider the number of times it's been delayed and the fact that its original budget was supposed to be 500 million and now has gone out to over, well over 9 billion and even in now is in danger of being scrapped because of budget issues, Congress are not happy at all. Well, I think that's enough from me and I hope that's been a good update with James Webb. I hope you found it informative and I hope you found it interesting. So if you have, please hit the like button below and if you haven't done so well already, then please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon and you'll be notified when I upload some more videos. So that only leaves me to say one more thing, science is truth and thank you for watching.